Now the next stage, now that we have everything split up and nice nicely, uh, and th this stage is takes the longest because you you have to make sure everything uh, flows nicely with with every other piece, and uh, you don't miss any any part that is not gonna not gonna interfere with another part. And and for this one, for this figure, it has a lot of a lot of parts usually, especially if you look at my bulldog or the minima. Really, pieces are really simple. They have like a couple of pieces, but I want I chose this one because it's not a it's not a, a simple uh, split, and it has a lot of lot of parts. And hopefully, hopefully you'll find this helpful. And the shells. Uh, this one we're not going to use, but I'm just going to put in there. And. Uh, you forgot about the body. We don't need it anymore. So it made its purpose. Okay. So uh, next is I'm going to finish the hand and then we can start king uh, and add the keys for the final stage. All the parts are split and now we're ready to add king to, to each piece. Now we'll start uh, from the top and for this one we are going to add a key so i'm going to move that to the bottom again i'm going to use the same workflow so you can download these keys uh, that i created and i'll leave a link uh, in the comments in the under the video so we'll drag that and then <clears throat> what you want to do here is uh, shift control click and you'll see we have two of them right so then you have to do auto groups, all right? And then go back, uh, just shift control uh, anywhere outside and then just do shift control on the piece. Now, here's two things you gotta keep in mind. The part with the sharp edges is the part that's gonna cut, all right? So always this is the one that's gonna be split. So now if I go shift control drag, we're gonna have the part and the part that has this nice uh, bevel or chisel, uh, that's the part that it's not going to, uh, that's it's going to be keyed into, right? So now that one is hidden, so I'm going to do split hidden, and we have it here, okay? So now I can move the, what's the part that we need? We need the head, okay? So if I take this key and put it down, that's, and I'm going to do live boolean, that's the key for the head, Okay? Right, so now I'm not going to key that yet because I need to do the one for the neck. Now for the neck, I'm going to do, I'm going to add a, a key. I'm going to drag this in. Now when placing the key, you have to make sure it doesn't go over the edge. All right. And the other thing you have to double check is you always have to make sure the part that's going to get into just make sure you have transparency on you can see it's not poking out or it's not going too deep or it's not intersecting with another key you'll see in in a, in a, in a bit and we'll do the same here uh, if you do poly group do shift control on that one there are two pieces do auto group and then we go shift control outside and then do shift control on it again right so now i can shift control drag and do split hidden so now we have the key outside okay so the head now has two keys one male that goes into the uh, shirt and one female that eats out of the uh, the head so i'm going to go ahead and hide everything and only keep that that one is merged anyhow with it right and then we can do boolean and do boolean mesh so uh, now we're going to have a piece that's going to have those two keys ready i'm going to do append and i'm going to have u mesh head one so now this piece has these keys all right so the head is ready and the hair is ready 
Okay, make sure you don't delete the, the other key, the head one, because then, we, we, then we'll have to create it again. So, and make sure you don't move this. So this one, once you create it, don't move it, don't scale it, don't, don't do any edits to it until it has done its, its job, which is to cut out of the shirt. So now I'll, I'll move that underneath it. And now that's the key that cuts into, into the shirt. So, uh, so we don't do this for each piece, the boolean. I'm going to do it for all, all the parts that. So you have to think of it. What other pieces go into this? The other piece that goes into this is the sleeves, right? So I'm going to unhide everything, take the sleeve, move that down, take the other sleeve, move that down as well. And then I'm going to reveal these, take that sleeve, Going to add a key to it. You don't have to have your keys huge or anything. Uh, they can be tiny. Uh, I like to make them big because then I can. Uh, the beauty of that is you can um, use them to attach the clamps to for for painting. Uh, they're usually nice to add uh, drainage holes into them. And the other thing that I like is I can test out my figure before. Again, make sure you test out. Uh, I can test out the figure by placing them in and see uh, if all pieces fit before I glue them, before I do any any work on them. So we checked if it looks good in transparency. Shift, uh, control, click. Two of them, auto groups. Shift, control, click again. And then shift, control, drag. And I can do split hidden. So now that's the new key that I created. And I add it under the shirt because that's going to cut out of the shirt. Just bear with me for a second. It's not that complicated. Now for the other one, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to drag a key here, put it in. Uh, double check, see if it's coming out of the shirt or it's intersecting with anything. And you see uh, now sometimes and I still haven't figured out why it does that. Sometimes it, it will do the auto groups for you. So now if I drag, uh, it should it should work just fine. So uh, now split hidden. And now I can move that up. I can hide these. And now we have three keys that will go through this. We have this key. We have the neck. Now I can do a Boolean. But before I do that, I'll do the key for the one that's going to go into the pants, right? So I'm going to do keying. I'm going to drag that key. Sorry. I'm going to drag that key here. And you'll notice, uh, make sure you have the key. Uh, don't, ha doesn't sit like that. Make sure it, both of them go into the figure. So this way you, you're sure they're going to fit again. Uh, drag, split hidden, and now I have the key for the pants. You can leave that up there uh, on top if it, uh, if it's a bit, if it help, helps you. All right, so now that I have all of these, so I have three keys that we created that will cut. So we have one, two, three that cuts out of the shirt, and we have one which was created to cut out of the pants. So let's go ahead and do a Boolean now. Now I have the piece with all these pieces. And that's uh, when you do polygroup, the best way to find out if it's if uh, you have the U-mesh, other than that it's named like that, you can check out these. This is dense, and these are like really low because uh, the keys are really low poly. Okay. Now that we have the key for the pants, we'll move that down. Take the pants, move them down. And now we can Boolean that here. And again, we're, we're already here. We'll do the ones for the legs. So uh, just make sure you have this in. We'll do, we'll do the other one. Just push that in. And again, uh, always double check with what it's connected with. 
have transparency on because sometimes you'll do a key and maybe it will it's a bit too thin you we will see we, i'll show you that and when we get to the uh holsters all right those, those look really good now you can do if you don't want to do auto group like multiple times because we hope we don't want the auto groups here anymore so we'll do auto groups like that right and now if we see uh, we can go ahead and select this just make sure because sometimes it might select the one uh inside so just make sure that doesn't happen so split hidden and now these keys are for the boots i'm going to keep those up and i'm going to hide those two because I, I don't need them now okay so now we have one that cuts here and these two so i don't have anything else that attaches to you can always double check because the, this one i don't want it to be attached to the belt i'm just going to add it there so now again i will do make boolean mesh pants are ready let's do the shoes so we have the keys for them i uh, went ahead and moved the shoes down and now we have the keys that cut into the top uh the shoes will not be connected in anything i might create holes for magnets at the end but we'll, we'll figure this out a bit later so uh let's go ahead and do a boolean on this and you'll notice that i'm not worrying about renaming now uh we'll do, still have to do a bit of renaming once uh once we finish uh once we finish all of them because that then becomes really crucial uh and really important when we have uh, we have to export each piece and know what what parts are we printing and so on uh let's do this part so let's move this and let's move that together so this is what i was saying about uh parts that might go through it right and so we'll select the keys and we can drag that and this one because it's it's thin if i drag it in it will reveal the key inside which is not a problem because the the gun is not going to sit into it so you can do that it's not a it's not a huge problem what i'm going to do is i'm going to resize this okay and so it doesn't poke out on that side but i don't mind if it pokes out on this side because once i glue uh these on I can sand it, but I'll try to make it. Uh, <clears throat> because the problem is, if I if I make this here, it's going to be so thin it might break. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna even worry about that. I'm just have it go through it, uh, and then I'll cut that and I'll sand it once I get to the to the sanding stage. I'll do auto groups, and I'm gonna do split hidden. So now I move that down hide that one and this is how it's going to split uh, on that part so i'm going to do make boolean mesh so this way when i glue these parts and we'll see what i mean in a second and you also have to keep in mind that these you'll notice something with these keys that they're a bit the outer part is a bit larger and bigger so now that you look at this see it's not that a huge gap so when i glue this i'm just going to have to send this a bit down and it should should fit i should fit in just fine and it's not visible from the inside this is what i was saying you sometimes you have to check to make sure it doesn't go through the model but for this one we want it to go through the model all right uh what else let's do the holsters so we'll move both holsters down okay and we'll take this because this one will have the same same technique as these so what I'm going to do is I'm going to merge these two down just for a second. And so I don't have to do it for each, uh, each piece and uh, put transparency on. And I'm going to make some keys. With this one, you got to make sure you don't make the key so it pops out on this side and ruins your figure, uh, ruins your stitching. And you have to make sure it's going through the whole piece because this piece is so thin you see you don't want these so you got to make sure it goes through it and it's big enough uh thick enough and again uh, you want that part to be hidden so as much as possible 
try to have that key not visible from uh, from 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 any side as as much as you can. So this way, it just makes it uh, makes it easier for you when when you have to clean. Yeah, sometimes just auto saves, especially when it gets to thirty million uh, polygons. The but I try to keep them as high as I can, uh, just so we don't lose any any details. Now with this, <clears throat> I'm gonna do the same. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and resize this as much as I can, while at the same time, I don't want to make it too small because I need to have a bit of support. Okay, so now I'm gonna do auto groups. I'm gonna do uh, split hidden. Okay, now I can go back to the other one, transparency, and do the same thing here. Again, uh, make sure it goes through, make sure it doesn't go out that other side, solo it. Uh, the keying part is not difficult. Uh, the only difficult, let's say, bar about this is it becomes a bit overwhelming because you have like so many stuff to think about. But once you do it, I don't know, once or twice, it's, it's just, just becomes easy. And you'll find, you'll find your own workflow uh, with this. So we'll do auto groups and split hidden. Okay, so now the these are done and I can, I can hide them. And I have these keys that will cut through it. So both of them will cut through that okay now you can you can merge these so if you want you can merge the keys because these two are going to cut from the same thing oh <clears throat> one other thing i forgot to to well see i don't I'm, I'm have to redo this um this one is way too close so it will it will cause some problems when i'm going to print this this might break and 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 i'm, I'm worried about that so Whenever you have problems like that, it's always better to fix them uh, beforehand, okay? I think I'm going to redo all of them, so this one as well. So I'm going to delete that. And for this, and because these are polygroups, I'm just going to select them. And <clears throat> I'm showing you this just so you can see that it doesn't matter. If you if you uh, screwed up the keying, it's not going to affect the model that you worked on. It's not a huge deal. It's a really easy fix. And that's why I created those keys because uh, I wanted something that I can, doing this as full-time job, uh, I wanted something that I can key really fast and uh, uh, low poly without uh, being too heavy. That's the only thing I forgot to, to check is I want this to be centered from these sides so it doesn't, get too close to any of, of the edges. I'm gonna make sure it looks good on the other ones. Uh, let's go ahead and do that one as well. So one thing I had to make sure is make sure they are rotated as well. Okay, so we have enough edge on the side, enough edge on the other side. Make sure here we don't have anything floating here. That one looks good. Okay, and now we can do auto group and I can isolate this and I can isolate that. And now I can do split hidden, move these under the straps. Let's do, if I do now, much better. So now I have, I have enough space here and enough space here. So it's not gonna the piece is not gonna break when I when I attach those. So I'll do boolean for this one. And the process is the same for all the other parts. So I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna show you all the process. I know if you want to skip ahead, you can go ahead and skip ahead. I just wanted to make sure you see all the like how each piece is being uh, is being keyed. So if I go ahead and do append, put that in, and now. I can go ahead and delete these two. And the next one would be the arms. So with this one, I'm gonna do the same. Center this, put it in. I'm gonna keep this long. 
but again double check like always always double check to see if it affects the the model or not do auto groups and let's do split hidden take the key drop it down uh, and i'm showing you like you can work inside your model you don't have to do my my thing of like dropping down stuff it's just as i said i, I always try to say this and my my workflow isn't perfect you, you don't have to do exactly what i'm doing i'm just showing you my workflow and sometimes you know, you know how it is uh, you you've been working for so long on a type of uh, project that you, you might be doing some mistakes or maybe someone will, will look at this and it's like, oh, there's like a simpler way to do this. And I'm pretty sure there is. Um, I'm pretty sure there is like way simpler stuff and way easier. But that's that's how I've been working and that's uh, how I work on the projects and it works fine for me. Okay, so now I'll take this, move it down. I'll take the other one and move that down to hide these. So now I can merge down these two, put these down. Now here's the thing. I can, you know how these are visible now? They're not merged. But if I go in and I'll do Boolean, it's going to create a Boolean with both, two, both of these meshes and with the parts cut out of it. See, append just saves you that extra step of like doing uh, doing stuff twice or three times. Uh, you'll notice that I don't do okay, so, uh, always okay, because sometimes you might delete stuff uh, easy in, uh, in ZBrush, and I don't want to do that, because you can't bring it back. You have to make sure you saved it. So this is why. Okay, what's next? Uh, so now the hands have it here. Uh, are we done? Oh, let's see. Okay. Let's see. Okay, let's, uh, no, no, we're not done. Oh, we have this guy. Okay, so, uh, for this one, yeah, I'm going to add the key here. So, uh, we'll add the key here. And we'll move that. For this key, I'm going to make it wide, a bit wider. So, yeah, don't worry. I mean, it, with these keys, you can make them wide, uh, like that. It's still, still going to work. It's no problem. I think this is, like, version 2.0, because I, I changed them a bit. Like, the first one was, like, really crap. Uh, and each time I, I change them, I update them, and you can, you can go ahead and download them. So you'll always make sure to have... I'll make sure always you always have like the latest version. Uh, for this one, I want to double check because this was is a tiny part, and I don't want it to be to go uh, through that piece too much. So I'll do auto group, and I'll do split hidden. So that key, I'm going to move it down, and then I'm going to take this hand, and I'm going to add a tiny one for this one as well. And I'm going to check. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to keep it like that. It's going to be a tiny piece anyhow. I'm going to do auto group. See uh, how sometimes it might select the one in the in the middle. And this way, you know, uh, oh, that's the one inside. I'm not, and one of the reasons that I put that is to easy to differentiate between them. And also the second thing is when you print, sometimes uh, the edges, uh, I don't know, they pile up some gunk or they print up a bit crooked. And this way, I know it's gonna fit in uh, nicely, and that for me, for me, it works. It works really nice. Okay. And here's the thing: uh, you'll notice that with the with the keys, it has like a a bit of a gap. So if that gap is too large, you can tweak it. Like you can uh, in the keys that I send you, uh, you can tweak the gaps to to your own liking. Like if you know what's the uh, distance that usually your printer uh, prints. Uh, I'm not. I'm not that much technical into this. Like usually, if it looks good. All right. So here's the problem <clears throat> that I didn't. I didn't check. Uh, you see how that added like an extra face? Well, this happened because I was, I wasn't careful. And what I did here is I did that. 
I didn't check to make sure this goes right straight in. So now I have to redo that. So I'm going to do redo the keying here. I'm going to make sure those goes in. Okay. I'm going to do auto group. For this one, I'm just going to delete this one. So delete hidden. Go back to this. And I'm going to do uh, split hidden. And I'm going to take the key and move it down. So now we don't have that. That's why, that's why I always say like double check, double check, because it's, uh, you might miss something. Boolean, make Boolean mesh. I think, I think that's the last part we have. Uh, that one has the keys, so I'm going to keep it here. Uh, this one, I'm not worried about the keys. Uh, the gun won't have a key because it's holstered. This one has the key. Uh, the key is there. Uh, shirt should have one, two, three, four. This one has... One female, two male. And oh, let me save that so, so we don't, just to make sure we have all of them. This is keyed as well. Uh, that one is keyed as well. That's keyed. Uh, that's the arm with the sleeve, or the bracelet. Okay, those are keyed as well. Uh, straps looking good. Sleeves looking good. Uh, bracelet looks good. And finally hair. I think that's the, that's the last one. All right. So now I can go ahead and we can, we need to do one more uh, step. I might piss off some of the people who are like expert in ZBrush. Uh, cancel. Uh, this is a step that you, if you don't want to do it, don't, don't do it. But I'm also explaining why you have to do it. <clears throat> uh, what I'll do now is I'll do something uh, which is Z remeshing these, again, dynameshing these again. Here, and here's why I do that. So now if you look at this and I'll do auto group, right? These are still two parts. They're not one part, okay? So if I take this and I do a hollow on them. A hollow means it adds, it makes them in, like empty in the inside, right? So then you have to create some, um, uh, some uh, drainage holes just to save materials. And, and I'm, here's what I'm, and see if I can do that with this. I'm gonna do auto groups. Oh, with this one, I think I zero meshed it. Uh, what, it what it does, is when you when you when you create hollow, it will create two chambers, and then so if I add the drainage hole here, it's not going to drain the resin that's that's inside. You have to make sure it's thick enough to go in to go through the two walls. So instead of having to to deal with that, what I do is I'll just do Dynamesh again. That's that's it. It's just an extra step that if you don't want to do it or you have a better solution for it, just go ahead and do that. I won't mind, nobody will mind. It's your own workflow. Go ahead and be, you know, do whatever, do whatever works for you. Uh, I just, I just like doing this step. Saves me a lot of, a lot of freaking headache. Okay. And the, one of the things that uh, when you do this, uh, if you have a problem with the mesh and you do dynameshing, it's going to break. It's just going to give you like there is, uh, and it's like an extra precaution. Again, see if I do auto groups, that's separate. That's haven't, you know, Dynamesh, that one. Uh, for this one. For these, you don't have to. Like the, the ones that you cut out of, you can go, it's not a problem. Like you see, it's still a piece. It's the same piece. Like if I if I go and do auto group now, it's not a separate piece because it's actually con connected to them. But the ones that has an external key, 
then for those, you're still going to have that. Even for these, I'm still going to do it because it's my workflow. Right? See? For this, if I do auto groups, separate. So add some resolution to it. Dynamesh. It looks nice. Okay. This is the same thing. And we're almost done. Do the pants. Dynamesh each one. Uh, at this point, I don't care how large the number is, is as long as it's the same as we had before. Uh, and I always like to keep like a extra high version just for for the sake of why not. I think this one is done. Shoes and the head. We are ready. One of the final steps in ZBrush is to uh, size this. So to add a size to it uh, for export. So I'm going to go ahead and append a cube. Okay. And I'm going to move this to the top. I can delete this because that I use that just for naming. So it doesn't name because uh, in ZBrush it names uh, the file depending on your first subtool. So I'm going to size this so it holds the figure inside and not the gun, just the from the top of the figure till the end of the boots. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. So here is what I use to resize my figure. So in, inside plugin, I use a plugin called Caliper Masters. All right. So there are multiple ways to doing this, uh, but this is the way that I used and I've been using for a while now. And what I love about this is I can uh, use multiple uh, sizing. I can save the sizing and so on. So while you have the gizmo, you go ahead and turn off the gizmo and go uh, back to the transpose. Uh, you make sure you have a constraint into Y because we want the Y axis. And I'm going to click here on top and then just do set caliper point. And then I'm going to click on the bottom and they set caliper point. And this is the caliper. And here I'm going to go in and type in eight. And I'm going to select custom inches. So now if I tell it display measurement, that's eight inches. So now I know my figure is eight inches. The best part about this is I can save it and I can save this as a caliper unit of eight inches. Now, uh, <clears throat> one more step. So, and the print and the figure is going to be ready for uh, to take into uh, mesh mixer or whatever other software you want to be using. I know there are a lot of, uh, you can do Cheeto box. Uh, there's Cheeto box pro, uh, but I'm going to be using uh, a mesh mixer for that. So the next step is about just going in and decimate and I'm not going to go over all of them uh, because it just takes a lot of time and it's just the same thing. So uh, decimation is just making sure uh, the printer and the software can handle the same because this head is 4 million and you can't send that for printing. You don't need that much amount of. So usually this is my rule of thumb. Uh, anything that has details. So let's say head, uh, torso, pants, um, uh, maybe the, those I'm going to keep at 250. So, uh, let's say pants, I'm going to do 250 K and it's going to go ahead and analyze the mesh and it's going to head, go ahead and, uh, and decimate this from 5 million, uh, polygons down to 250 K, uh, more or less. Right. And this is why I'm always telling you, I'm not going to go through each one of them because it just takes a long time for each one, uh, to happen. So. I'm going to show you this one and I'm going to do the head and then uh, I'll do the other ones and then, then we can uh, jump into a mesh mixer and prepare the mo the, the models for, uh, for sending them to your printer slicer. Okay, so now what I want to show you <clears throat> is this is the figure with 249 and this is the figure with 5 millions. You can't tell the difference exactly. And that's that's the whole process of decimating. So I'm just going to do the head again. So for this one, I'm going to go from 4 million 
down to 250. You can go lower. I think even 250 is an overkill. But again, it's uh, it's just a thing of how how how, you, how your your workflow and how you got used to to working. Because uh, sometimes you'll work with uh, jewelers, or sometimes we'll do like a pendant or something like that, and they might print it at five microns or some crazy, uh, you know, like that. And then you kind of need those details so you make sure you don't lose anything. For this one, we're not we're not going to do that anyhow. But this is how this is my rule of thumb of of when when it comes to splitting pieces because just, then it's easier for me to decide if it has a lot of details, two hundred fifty. If it's smooth areas and stuff like that, it's, I don't know, 150, 75,000. If it's a tiny piece, 30,000 or 20,000. Again, I'm going to show you. This is the piece at 245, and this is the piece at 4 millions. No difference. Looks great either way. And this is the final step inside ZBrush. Uh, as you noticed, I went ahead and named each piece. Now, Naming is important, so you know which part are you uh, printing, which part uh, has it failed, which part you need to reprint, and then, uh, and also, if you start working with clients and you start sending them these files and they tell you, all right, shirt, you know, pants, uh, Rio TCM, the Rio CTM, that's the one that it's, uh, you know, has a bit of problems. You know which files you need to you need to fix. So it's 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 also a thing of a workflow and and also keep in tidy. All right. So now for the last um, for the last step is I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, export these. So to export these, I'm just gonna go. You can go export and you can export each piece, but that takes a bit of time. So you can go into Z plugins uh, and you go into Subtool Master. Not scale master, subtool master, and so you have something called export, and then you select your um, your file format, and then it's going to go through each um, each subtool and save that. So now for the next step, you can uh, freely choose whatever the whatever software you find helpful for hollowing uh, your uh, your models. Now. You can keep your models, uh, you know, full, uh, but I don't recommend that. Uh, now, for small parts like the holster and the straps and the tiny holsters, I'm not going to hollow those because the amount of materials inside, the amount of materials inside is not uh, that huge, right? So what we're going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and open up a Mesh Mixer. Uh, and you can download Mesh Mixer uh, for free. Uh, or you can use something called a Cheeto box, uh, and you can also download Cheeto box for free as well. Models inside Mesh Mixer, we can start uh, hollowing parts. Now, for this, you can imagine I'm not going to add any hollowing to the uh, to the holsters. I'm not add any hollowing to the gun, um, uh, none to the straps as well. So the most parts, it's I'm going to add hollow for like a lot of parts who have a lot of volume. So for this one, I'm going to go edit hollow. And usually I'll just leave everything uh, as it is. Just accept. Uh, do this again. Hollow. I'm going to do the pants. And then edit hollow. Except, and then I'm going to go ahead and, and do the rest. I went ahead and hollowed each piece. And now for the last uh, step, just go, uh, go in, select each one from the list and go export and save that. So go ahead and do that for each one. And um, now I'm going to show you uh, the same workflow for the hollow uh, in inside Cheeto box. And we're going to use the same OBJ files. So for that one, I'm just going to take each part on its own. Uh, so I'm going to do shirt. So import that in. And for this one, I'm going to do hollow. Yeah. And wall thickness. I want the wall thickness to be two. And I'm going to do start. It goes about that really fast. And then also it gives you a preview of how 
um, how that's going to work. Now, for the final step, which I do in Cheetah Box, because <laughs> believe it or not, uh, adding holes in uh, drainage holes inside mesh mixer is, uh, is, is, is difficult. Let's, let's put it that way. And in Cheetah Box is just amazing. So uh, here's, here is what I do. I'll hide the holes and I'll put them around three millimeters uh, size. I'll hide them in keys. So if I have a key, I'll just create a hole, make sure it goes through uh, here, do another one here, another one here. And here's the good thing, amazing thing about uh, uh, G2 box. It also saves your keys if you would like to print those uh, those out. I never do, so I don't. I don't, I don't need those. Uh, and sometimes, if let's say you're you're putting this on the bed uh, like that, and it prints, right? Sometimes it will tell you, okay, we're getting like a, uh, and I'm going to show you that with uh, with the Form Labs uh, software. Uh, so sometimes, if you have that, what you, what I'll do is I'll add extra ones outside. But for that, I'll make them maybe make the hole a bit smaller, so maybe like two millimeters or 250 and I'll do add a hole here uh, maybe for the depth I'll make it a bit tiny because sometimes it's just going to ruin your model so I'll add here okay just to make sure it gets enough uh, now if you want to make sure you're not going to get uh, I'll add extra drainage holes because usually if it's not going to affect my uh, my model so it's not I'm not I don't I don't need to fill them up or I don't need to uh, because let's say you add a drainage hole here right you need to go when you print this you need to go in and fix it but sometimes you can't without doing that I mean sometimes there is no uh, maybe you're working on a piece which uh, has details from all over and it's just I don't know you're printing a sphere for example uh, or a helmet and and, you, and you're still going to have uh, that part and you don't have any part to disguise and this is usually how I how I hide all my uh, start okay and then we'll do cheetah box add that one there and for example with with this you can hide some stuff because you have the we have the head split in a weird way. So because we're gonna have hair here, we can add one here if you want, add another here if you want, and uh, hopefully it doesn't need more uh, drainage holes. All right, and that's, once that's done, I'll go ahead, save as, selected model, and it's gonna save it as an STL. All right, so we'll do another one. Let's do the right boot. Let's hollow it two millimeters. Start okay. And now let's go ahead and add holes. So for this one, maybe eight. It's not working. Maybe what you can do is you can raise this up and you can do the hole from the inside out. For some reason, it's not, it's working there. For some reason, it's not working there. I'll add one here, and that should be should be enough. Now for these, uh, if you've seen my uh, making off, you'll you'll see how I uh, how I fill these holes with resin and then UV uh, before curing them. Uh, one tip is when you print any of your pieces, always make sure to leave a hole uh, so all the gases inside the resin escape and it doesn't the the piece doesn't break. Um, well, because it doesn't fully cure, it's always going to be uh, curing. Okay, let's do pants. And that one the same. Do a hollow. And let's do. So I'll add one. If if for the key it doesn't working, 
make it smaller. So I'm going to do two. That should that should be working. This is why this is why sometimes Cheeto Box is a bit weird um, with hollowing. If I do the hollow inside uh, inside mesh mixer, I don't get that problem. And I think it's because uh, Cheeto Box. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe, maybe I'm doing something wrong here. Um, the I don't know, in the, in the in the previous versions it didn't have like precision like percentage. Maybe I'm not. I'm, I'm, I should be changing something to have more precision. But something like that. So I'm trying to hide as much as much as I can inside. Now, let's say for some reason you can't hide it and you need to. Do not whatever you do. Don't hide them in like areas like this crevices and stuff like that because they're going to be horrible you can't sand them but actually add them in areas which are plain like that because you then you just fill the hole and it's super easy to sand and you get a nice a nice flow uh, for for each piece and now you just it's just a matter of going over each one you know, the light sleeve again doing the same thing uh Hollowing it, let's do a precision of ninety uh, percent. See if that makes a difference. Should it takes longer because then the interior one has to have more resolution. Okay, and if we do, let's do three millimeters. And that worked. Worked. Just make sure with, with how long this is, doesn't do a hole on the other side. Because uh, I've done this a couple of times. Uh, so usually I'll forget how long the, the cylinder is. So as long as these are hidden, don't worry. You can add as many as you want. All right. Now that we are inside uh, preform, I went ahead and added uh, three uh, pieces, uh, the pants, uh, the head and the shirt. So usually how I work is I'll tell uh, Preform to do an auto orient. And sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And I end up orienting it uh, how I think it's it's going to work. Um, I've been doing this for a while. and Okay, once I'm happy with that, I'll just go in and tell it auto generate. And it's going to go ahead and generate supports for that part. And that's uh, what it comes up with. And usually it adds more than enough. I mean, you can go in and tweak them, but usually it does a really, really good job. Uh, I'll do auto orient again. And the thing is with, with the orienting, uh, I mean... I used to do this manually with like a B9 software and uh, when I used to print on a Moai. Uh, it's, you have to try to stay away from areas uh, which have details. So I don't want any supports on his face. Uh, that's obvious. So I will try to have the supports in areas I can sand easily uh, without, uh, without uh, you know, ruining the design so I'll do that for and you'll notice in a second what what I meant about now this works fine but the problem is you have a cup which is this and if you leave this to print it's going to fail so because I know the supports have been added here or here uh, in the in the top of the the head you can print you can print the piece like that and you won't have uh, any cups so let's see if I generate supports now all right then that works nice because it doesn't add any uh, maybe move this a bit because I don't want any supports on the nose I think something like that works works good because uh, let's say it's going to add you're going to have supports here but that's going to be covered by the hair uh, everything everything else is going to come out uh, really really nice or you do have the option to print it like this again uh, just make sure you look at it from all sides maybe a bit lower and then if you auto generate 
again, you won't have any uh, suction cups because remember we have a, super, uh, a drainage hole here and we have a drainage hole here. And I think, I think I'm going to leave it like that because it's, uh, might just get rid of that or just make it on the back a bit and do an ungenerated again. Um, because I want this part to be clean and uh, it's going to be easier. I mean, half of his neck is going to be covered by, by the, by the shirt. Anyhow, for this one, again, uh, auto, I do auto orient. As you can see, with the auto orient is is a hit hit and miss. It's not always it's not always the best option. Uh, I mean, you do have the options to tell it where the base is, uh, and then try again. But usually, it's pretty stubborn about where where to put uh, supports. So something like that, maybe on the side, see if that has any, that works. And then I'll do auto generate. Uh, what I love about Foam Labs and Preform is that you have this, uh, you know, it like assesses your, your pieces and it tells you if you, uh, if you're gonna have any problems with, with the print. And I'm pretty sure a couple of new software do that now. Or you can you can print this the other way around uh, like that, but then you got to make sure uh, you have uh, supports. I think I think this way it will work nicely, and we're ready we're ready to print now. Obviously, I'm I'm, I'm going to bring in the the other parts as well. Pieces like this are usually really really weird. Uh, to print because they're going to be filled with supports and I think something like that should work just fine so I'm going to go auto generate selected yeah that's pretty good that's really clean actually uh, do auto orient on this see if that what that brings us that's pretty good as well and uh, those pieces are ready so now the next step is to send this to the printer and we're ready to print.